That's the way they used to scat sing, even here at Marlboro or downtown way back in 1943. And Jack Kerouac, when he was looking back, remembered when he lived in Lowell, Massachusetts, many, many years ago in the 1950s, as a boy. His father, Leo, only spoke French at home. That's why Jack learned the language and found out that the long français is such a joke. His father said, Mon cher Jacques, ici tu reste ici toute la vie, tu es obligé sûrement que ta mère travaille toute la vie dans un factory, which is mad if you stay in town, you're going to end up working in a factory like your mother, you better split with a football scholarship and go to a higher level. So because of his football skills and his great grades, especially in the English language, who didn't even speak till he was six years old, he got accepted to the prestigious Horace Mann. And he did so well in his studies at the Columbia University, gave him a football scholarship as well as a literary one. On the third week in football practice, he broke his leg. And being a French-Canadian Quebecois background, he was too proud to beg. So his great coach, Lou Little, had to let him go. And all of us is history, don't you know? After seven years of no inspection and total rejection, after making the final version of On the Road in 1951, he packed it. And unfortunately, Gilbert Milstein, the third string critic of the mighty New York Times, was free that night because Orville Prescott, who was the number one critic, who despised both things genetically American during a time of the uptight literary version of wherever you had a fake English accent. If you don't believe me, look at the wonderful film about Salinger that was just on educational TV last night and see what a bunch of uptight people there were. Such a funny thing. <laughs> they might not be considered literary or even intelligent or even human if they showed any signs of anything in the vernacular, forgetting that Tercerima was written by great Italian writer who is now the foundation of all things literary in Italy, but at that time they thought he was completely insane because he wrote in the bebop language of his time called Terza Rima, don't you know? Anyway, Gilbert Milstein, risking his whole career, gave it a fantastically, humongously good review. And all the people who didn't like the third string critic writing that were so pathologically Jealous, they didn't know what to do. <laughs> the great crewman Capote in his white coat went on a TV show and said it wasn't writing, it was typing. <laughs> and in spite of his great books, he's still up in the same white suit in heaven complaining and griping. <laughs> so for everyone here at Marlboro, New York, especially here at the Falco Center of Creativity, who wants to write, paint, play, sing, or do anything creative at all, Tell your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your children, and yourselves that we've all got something creative, a song to sing, a story to tell, and everybody should do it before the next year's coming fall. So with that thought in mind for all of you, since Shakespeare said that brevity is the soul of wit, I guess the exposition and the coda of the song is just about it. Except to say that if you think that everything that I've said is certifiably crazy, in spite of that, let's all pull our day. Yeah, yeah, yeah.